On April 6, 2017, 22-year-old Jacob Gray went missing while traveling on Salt Duck Hot Springs Road in the Olympic National Park of Washington. His whereabouts remained unknown until August 10, 2018, when his body was discovered in Ho Lake, located within the Daniel J. Evans Wilderness area of the park. This was 15 miles away from his belongings and at an elevation of 5,300 feet. On April 6, Gray's bicycle, trailer, and most of his belongings were found approximately 6.5 miles up Sol Duk Hot Springs Road, a picturesque route named after the Quileute Indian term for sparkling waters. An unusual discovery was made. A bow was lying on the ground, and arrows were embedded in the ground and protruding from the back of the trailer, but there was no sign of the owner of the bike and gears. Whenever you're in a wilderness situation, particularly one that's high altitude and remote, there's several things you have to contend with if you're trying to survive. You've got the temperature, you have potential wildlife and uh, terrain related injuries, you have the need for water, the need for food, and any of these things can become a major problem and potentially kill you if you're not ready for them and if you don't know how to deal with them. However, what caught the ranger's attention were the four arrows stuck in the ground in an east-west line near the tarp. While going missing isn't a crime or an emergency for individuals over 18, a person isn't considered missing until someone reports them as such. The in following this... is the actual missing person's dispatch call to park rangers. Dispatch, 741 Ron on North Point. I've got a bicycle that has went off the Salt Lake Road about uh, mile marker 7, and I can't find anybody around it. You might want to send a ranger up here so we can see what's going on. Copy, thanks for the info, 1630. 741 Ron, 611. 741 Ron, detect the lead, one north point. On it that way, is that bicycle down the bank a ways, or is it easy to get to? It's easy to get to, it's got a little carrier on the back of it too, it looked like it crashed off the road. Okay, so it didn't look like maybe somebody lived there so they can go off for a hike. It doesn't look like anybody's hit it. It looks like he just went off the road. Um, I'm going to stay here until you get up this way. Okay, I'll be coming over from the Ella. 741 Ron. The case of Jacob Gray is interesting because we have someone who is very young, in his early 20s, and who had, by all accounts, you know, a lot of experience with dealing with camping, even camping solo, and had a lot of equipment. He had a whole bicycle cart full of the type of gear that you would need to survive in just that type of environment. And that leads to the question, why didn't he survive? When he was discovered something around 15 miles from his main campsite where he had left most of his gear, he still had some of his gear on him. 15 miles is a long way, but it's not an unreasonable amount of distance for someone to cover in their early 20s who's experienced outdoorsman, but it does make you wonder why he was so far away from the area that he had stashed most of his gear. Olympic Mountain Rescue was called in nearly a week later on April 12th, and during their search, they found evidence suggesting that someone had exchanged hiking boots for running shoes, walked towards the river, and slipped and fallen into it, leaving a mark on a mossy rock. Further downstream, there were signs that the individual may have attempted to climb out. However, a state fisheries biologist was assigned to look through the log jams in the river instead of swift water rescue divers. On a noon of Friday, August 10, 2018, a group of biologists embarked on a trip into the mountains to study marmots. During their expedition, they stumbled upon the remains, clothing, and gear. The discovery was made at the top of a ridge located above Ho Lake, approximately 5,300 feet above sea level, and at a distance of at least 15 miles from where he abandoned his bicycle. The location where Jacob's remains were discovered was not near any trail, and during the time of his disappearance, which was in April, the terrain would have been covered in snow and potentially prone to avalanches. The remains were found on a treeless ridge, which could have been visible from the air. Was it foul play? Or was it something even weirder that happened out there in the middle of the woods? 
it's always possible that it was something natural, either a wild animal, or maybe he ate something that was poisonous, similar to what happened to Chris McCandless. So some of my questions are, if he did want to die, why isn't it more obvious what happened? And if he didn't, he seemingly had all the resources at his disposal to at least put up a good fight. He had lighter on his body. It doesn't appear that he had made any fire or anything near to where his body was found. So there's lots of weird things that could have happened. Maybe there's another person that he met out there, someone who he knew before, maybe a stranger. You know, maybe someone who convinced him to go off the path that he was comfortable with, either accidentally or on purpose. Maybe they became separated, or maybe this person took him out into the woods on purpose and it was some kind of murder. While we'll almost certainly never know exactly what happened, we do know that a lot of things can go wrong when you're out in the woods, especially alone. So it's always good to make sure you're mentally, physically, and gear-wise prepared to be in a potential wilderness survival situation. And that's especially... this micro documentary and want to watch the full version of Jacob Gray's story, please click the link on the video. Also, please subscribe, like, and share. It really helps the channel.